Good morning, good afternoon, and thanks for joining our quarterly gold webinar. I'm Andrew Musgraves, product manager for VanEx Gold and Resource Equity Related Strategies. As always, I'm joined by several members of our active gold investment team, including gold portfolio manager, Ema Casanova, as well as senior analyst, Adam Graff. And uh, for those of you who have joined our quarterly gold calls in the past, um, just a heads up that we're gonna be doing things uh, a little differently today in terms of covered content. Um, on most of our quarterly webinars, we're just running through updates to the gold markets uh, and spending a majority of the time kind of diving into detail on the, on the miners themselves. But today we're gonna just take a, step back and kind of cover the rationale for investing in gold. And the reason we want to do this is just that one, there's new participants on today's call and some are likely new to the space. Um, and two, we just think it's important to kind of revisit this rationale uh, from time to time. And um, in particular, as gold has reached new highs in each of the last four quarters. So the first part of the webinar, we'll just cover why gold. Um, and for the second part of the webinar, we'll, we'll cover why now, right? What is it about the current market dynamics that make uh, now such a compelling time to invest in gold. And then finally, of course, we'll, uh, we'll, we will hum a few bars on the gold miners themselves. So uh, as always, we encourage you to ask your questions at any time throughout the webinar um, and the windows provided. And we'll do our best to kind of slot them in to the Q&A session towards the end of the call. Um, and before we begin to, I just wanted to kind of remind folks um, that a copy of today's presentation is made available to you. Uh, following the webinar, um, and we also just strongly encourage you to visit our website, vanek.com, where you can access a host of the gold-related content that we have, um, including a white paper that was recently published by the firm's multi-asset solutions group covering gold asset allocation. So we got a lot of things to cover here. I'll just turn it to Ema to kick things off for us right now. Good morning. Thank you, Andrew. Good morning and good afternoon. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, like Andrew um, summarized in our webinar today, we're going to share our insights on, on the benefits of gold investing, why we think it is a good time today to think about investing in gold and gold miners. So we'll do um, the overview of, of uh, why gold, um, and then we'll go to the why now, some of the drivers and our outlook. And like Andrew mentioned, we'll, do, we'll have a note on, on gold miners and where they are now and what that means for the space. Um, so why gold? I thought it'd be interesting to start with this first slide. Um, if you're looking at this one chart, um, you see gold year today has been among one of um, you know, the top performance. If we left out Bitcoin, which we're happy we're not leaving out, obviously, here at Vanek, but um, you'll see that gold and gold stocks are performing um, pretty strongly this year. If you didn't own any gold, if you don't own any gold at this point, or you're very low exposure, you might look at this picture and kick yourself a little. But um, no point in doing that, no point of uh, crying over spoiled milk. Uh, the question really, the, the natural question, the important question uh, for investors today is after this such a phenomenal really performance so far this year for both gold and gold stocks, is there more left in the tank for, for the gold trade? Um, why should you add gold and, and why should you add it at this point? So let's start with why gold? Um, I'm just gonna go over some gold um, attributes, benefits to, to make a case for gold. And these are attributes and benefits that gold has demonstrated over time, historically, over a long uh, track record. Um, so in the, for the next slide, I really like this one because um, I think it is probably the first thing everyone thinks of. Even your general investor or your less sophisticated investor, when they think gold, they, they make that immediate association. Well, yeah, you own gold just, just in case. And so so it is one of gold's main roles. Historically, it has been um, a safe haven, um, a hedge against market uncertainty, against market volatility, geopolitical risk, basically a place where investors hide when there is a heightened level of risk um, and fear, really. And, um, you know, we highlight in this chart sort of how gold has performed over this period is just to say it's not just, you know, something that it's supposed to be gold's role, it's that it 
demonstrates it time and again. And we highlight all of these fears, including more recent events, which were brief, but I asked Andrew to include that the Russia-Ukraine um, times where, you know, there was obviously increased uh, risk and fear over what was happening there. The regional bank crisis, which was small in the U.S., but still, Goal responded each of those times in the way that we would expect. So its role as a safe haven, um, in my view, is intact. Um, you know, we highlight that, like I said, the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the 23 Viking crisis, the tragic developments in the Middle East, all very good and recent examples of the type of events and risk that drive investors to gold. Um, time and again, uh, investors run to gold for that protection in times of crisis. Another attribute, which kind of goes hand in hand, but not necessarily, but but it, it, it's another of the reasons um, investors typically think of gold is because it does perform well during uh, inflationary periods. And we show there, obviously, the higher the inflation, the, the better the performance um, for gold. And so clearly we are coming from higher levels of inflation in the last couple of years and bringing it to a level which is uh, much lower today. Um, uh, and yet I, we think, I think that um, inflation fears, the risk that we might not be able to quite bring inflation back to uh, the targets, uh, continue to drive gold here. And so it is um, something to, to um, note gold's performance during periods of higher inflation. Um, with all that said, gold's benefits extend before, beyond times of crisis because it has a very low correlation with most asset classes. Gold also acts as a very good portfolio diversifier, and that's what we show in this slide, the addition of gold can materially enhance a portfolio's risk-adjusted returns. And you see all these asset classes here, we could add a few more. We do it over a, lot, a, a long time period there, 25 years, but the point is very little uh, correlation with all the um, asset classes, which I think helps to understand why you would want it um, in your portfolio. Um, the next slide, talks to the benefits of gold as far as including gold in your portfolio. And when we talk about risk just returns, what does that mean? You see the, the performance there um, as far as what happens to a portfolio when you add. And I mean, we got our classic 60-40 stocks bond portfolio. Well, what happens if you take you know 10% and add it to gold? Um, you see that there are improvements there um, to returns. And so we should highlight that. You know, we've seen central banks highlighting why they're adding uh, to their gold reserves. And, you know, these are some of the things that are in the list. The fact that gold um, is a safe haven, that gold acts well inflationary periods and it improves returns in a portfolio and diversifies it. Um, and then I think it is also important to look at gold's uh, performance over the long term. You know, yes, it's good during time of crisis. Yes, it has at least benefits, but it actually also that's pretty well in the, in the long run. Um, you know, most people do think of gold uh, for an asset during times of turmoil. And unfortunately, I suppose we, we are in that sort of environment right now. But the performance of gold over the past 20 years is, is solid, as you can see in this um, slide out performing on average other asset classes. So good to also keep in mind when we're trying to answer the why gold question. I, I wanted to highlight that our multi-asset uh, solutions and quantitative analyst uh, analysis team put together what I think is a really nice, concise, comprehensive piece on the case for gold um, and why we, they believe it belongs in every investor's portfolio. I invite you to read it as your sales rep or somebody to send it to you, or you can just find it on our website. Um, it's under Insights Gold Investing section of our website. And in there, they have some nice analysis where um, similar to that slide we showed before, they show the um, impact on a portfolio um, with a 5, 10, 20% allocation to gold and other really cool charts and stuff. So do check that out. So with all that in mind, um, like I said, when we begin, the, the, I guess, probably more important question, especially after gold, uh, gold as an asset class uh, being so, uh, such a good performance this year is, why, why should I add it now? Um, I like to start always by saying that 
what I think it's, it's a very important point. I don't believe, we don't believe investors should try to time the gold market. It's a very tricky thing to try to do. Uh, I tell you this from having covered the sector for over 20 years. Um, if you're asking why I add gold now, I think first you ask yourself, does my portfolio have any exposure to gold? And if the answer is no, then it, to me, it's a very crystal clear, easy answer. If you don't have any gold exposure right now, is it a good time? Today is as good a time to add exposure. We believe having zero gold in your portfolio makes makes no sense. Um, and what, I'm, what we mean is, if your portfolio is, is allocation to gold is zero, then it's pretty much always a good time to think about adding some or adding some. Um, you know, I mentioned all these events that can drive gold in that slide where we saw this crisis and what how gold responds. But the truth is, when I talk about timing, is the truth is none of us can predict when these events are going to happen. There, you know, I like to refer to them as sort of black swan events, and none of us could have predicted any of these events. Not the invasion of Ukraine, not the banking crisis in 23 here in the U.S., not the attacks on Israel on October 7. So. You have um, gold in there and you have it, you don't try to, you don't wait in response to these events, you have it there in case some of these events happen. And obviously for the other attributes that I highlighted, um, we think investors can be proactive, um, make gold a core component, not a tactical piece, but a, a, a core component of your portfolio, an asset that enjoys a permanent allocation and maybe the exposure, the level of that exposure can vary, but it always has an allocation. And when you need it, that asset is there during those times of crisis, during the times of inflation, it comes in as sort of a, a financial insurance. So why gold now? Well, gold uh, always, I suppose. Um, but if you do have gold exposure, and it's very you know, natural and good question to wonder, should I be increasing that exposure? Or should I be, you know, after such a phenomenal performance, is this it? You know, should I be taking profits here? What, what should be my approach um, as far as uh, gold comes? And um, I wanna go over why we are constructive. Uh, we have a constructive view on the gold price. The chart shown here is it shows a gold relentless rally this year, very strong performance um, with, um, you know, new, you know, is I see a goal on its way to even higher highs? We, we believe so. Um, it's been establishing fresh highs almost every month uh, and some months every week and in this last few weeks almost every day. So it has been a very impressive um, rally. If we move to the next slide, I think what's important is what we think and this will be familiar to the, you know, the attendance um, of this webinar last time because I, I showed the same slide. Um, we do think the landscape uh, remains largely supportive of gold. What we think have been the drivers of this year's rally, um, we think remain in place. And like I said, I did talk about this in the previous webinar, but I want to review them briefly again today because I do think um, it is important to go over what's what's behind all this. Um, I think. On the first point, we can all agree. We don't spend too much time on that. Unfortunately, geopolitical risk today seems to be getting worse every day. And so that obviously will continue to support gold fast supported and will continue to support gold from here. The next one is very interesting, of course, because last time we talked about this, there were just expectations of a cut. Of course, we just had a cut in September, a 50 basis point cut um, by the Fed, um, but obviously expectations of further cuts now coming in. And we do see gold fluctuating um, on comments by the Fed officials on um, market bets on how these cuts are going to pan out, but bottom line, uh, expectation of further cuts, lower real interest rates have historically been uh, supportive of higher gold prices. So future cuts uh, should continue to provide support to gold uh, from here. We have our, our next slide, which is, um, and, and I'll come back to the macro slide, but I just want to flash this one, where we show gold's performance 
250 days and 500 days after the first Fed rate cut in the last three cutting cycles. And obviously you can see it's not, not bad at all. Um, I did the numbers a few days ago on this, but obviously we have initiated the next one and we don't have the numbers on that one yet. But as you know, so far the cycle, when I did this numbers a few days ago, calls up almost um, around 5%, actually probably 6% now and after the last, um, the performance over the last couple of days. So it continues to to um, to do, I guess, uh, as, as the average here and the, the history suggests. Um, <clears throat> and then um, back to the driver slide, I just want to keep, continue to go down that list so that we stay on topic. I did touch on this earlier when I was showing the inflation figures. Yes, the Fed's cutting because inflation is starting to come down. They're comfortable with um, uh, where inflation is now. Um, I do still think that uh, sticking inflation above the Fed target and also potential that not just fiscal, uh, not just monetary policies um, by, by cutting rates and, uh, you know, fiscal policies could be inflationary and could potentially bring us into a, a, a next wave of higher inflation. And I think that is um, a driver for gold in this environment. Um, and then, of course, the next point, there's strong central bank purchase of gold, which is what all the hype really is about, it, it has been as significant, I've said this before to us covering the sector for as long as we have, it is a significant uh, historical shift to see central banks become such a dominant driver of gold prices in this um, last uh, rally for gold. And we have some charts to show um, what we're referring to. Um, if you look at how central banks have been, you know, they've been no doubt net purchases of gold for you know many years, I think 13 or 14 years now. So that's no surprise that central banks are, are, are buying gold and they've been uh, not been net sellers for quite some time. But what is clear from this chart we're showing here is how strong 2022 and 2023 were as far as um, what uh, the banks were, were doing. And we continue to expect that trend to continue. We're showing half year and you can see it's not that off trend, despite the record levels in 22 and 23, 24 is, and I think will be a little weaker, but it still be um, uh, uh, very supportive of gold prices. Uh, for here, we do expect this um, this trend to continue. The next slide, slide um, 15 here shows just, you know, if you're on, you know, why, why is this going on? We believe central banks, um, are looking to be less dependent on the US dollar, to de-dollarize, to diversify their uh, for uh, reserves. And gold is obviously a, um, a favorite asset when it comes to doing this. And so what we wanted to show there is just how they have started to increase that and yet how these uh, levels of gold reserves um, are still pretty low, especially compared to you know, develop economies versus emerging economies. And, and just in general, I had some uh, figures here when we compare, um, you know, China, for example, that um, I think we highlight here. Yeah, um, it's still just about 5% of the reserves are in gold. We don't know what exactly what China's target is, but our guess would be that after embarking in this commitment to increase gold reserves, it's gonna be much higher from five. Um, Natalia, our, our chief economist here at Vanek, um, who many of you probably follow, um, she sent me a few quotes from Adam Glapinski, which is the president of the National Bank of Poland. And I love getting those. She sent me this earlier this month when they said that Poland will continue to purchase gold and that they seek to hold 20% of reserves in gold, which I thought, it was like a really anecdotally just a good point to have. We don't, you know, not every bank is coming out and putting out a target, but this gives you an idea. Poland has been one of the uh, largest purchases of gold in this um, in this last uh, year or so. And for reference, gold Poland's gold reserves are about 13% of their uh, total reserves at present. So that just, I think it's a good way to put things into, into context. And I think it's not a, a coincidence that 20% was the level of gold reserves that Russia had when um, it invaded Ukraine. And 
as you know, most of its other foreign reserves were, were frozen, inaccessible. Russia's gold reserves today represent about 30% of their reserves. Um, if you look at places like the US, Germany, uh, gold accounts for about 70% of our reserves. So I, I don't think it's, it's crazy to think that China is likely targeting a much higher level from here. Is it 20 and 30%? Um, that would probably look uh, reasonable. And that's a lot of gold buying from here to support that. Um, along Chinese central banks, I, I do want to emphasize others. It's not just the Chinese central banks, other central banks. Um, the Asian investor and consumer have been supported gold here um, through physical and ETF purchases of gold, buying gold in basically any way they can have it. And that has been um, supporting gold as well. <clears throat> and last but not least, we, we still believe that what has historically been the main driver of gold price rallies um, could be starting to reemerge. And um, you see there, obviously, we're plotting uh, ETF gold holdings, um, bullion uh, holdings in ETF uh, as a proxy for investment demand. And you see the, this, this very strong historical correlation breaking down in the last couple of years. And you also see that little starting to see from about May of the June of this year, we're starting to see those holdings pick back up after relentless um, outflows. Um, so it, it, it's breaking what has been a, a pretty, like I said, um, strong relationship in the past. Maybe we're returning to that now. Um, it did register final inflows. I think I have here up about three and a half percent since the end of May, still down about 2% those holdings for the year. Um, and you can see, you know, historically, uh, um, you know, not near uh, its highs, uh, but we do think this could be the beginning of a trend reversal uh, with the potential comeback of the Western investor finally in full force leading to higher gold prices. And it's one of the main reasons why with all the other drivers still in place with central banks still supporting and all the other drivers that I mentioned before still in place from here, the return of this investment demand uh, we think could unlock uh, higher gold prices from here. And it's one of the um, main reasons we're so bullish on the gold price going forward. I've done some simple math. I'm not gonna go into all of it, but it basically involves you know, if you look at that chart there and you um, Boolean ETFs return to the peak levels uh, that you see there and whole word and gold were to sustain that um, same correlation that it had with these uh, investments in the past, then today that would imply a price north of 3,000, 3,100 or so just on that, on that kind of move uh, based on historical uh, performance in the past. So again, um, gives me, you know, um, gives me a lot of reason to, to be more, be positive on the gold prices from here. Um, I did say I had a, let me see how we're doing time. Perfect, because um, I'm almost getting to the end. Uh, a small section on gold miners. Uh, I, I think when we say gold should be a core component of any portfolio, I do mean gold as an asset class. Um, the gold equities offer additional benefits um, that I think make it essential that investors consider not just gold bullion, but also gold equities when they're designing their exposure to, to gold. Um, the next slide I have here just shows, sort of explains wh why should you, why should you own gold miners? And I think it, this paints a perfect picture in that it illustrates, you know, what happens to the profitability of these companies and their valuations as a result when the gold price increases. And so, yeah, we show um, a chart here, you know, just look at looking at this year, Q1 average gold price, uh, uh, 2072, Q3, that was last quarter, that just went by 2477. What does that mean for miners? Well, as the average gold price increased about 19 and a half, 20 percent from Q1 to Q3, which is you know pretty phenomenal. But I think more spectacular is that the average margins. And this is for a universe of companies. Yeah, it can fluctuate a little from here if we include a different universe, but you get the point. For this sector on average for this universe, an increase of almost you know 50% or more in margins as a result of cost is still 
being sustained at a contained um, quarter over quarter. And that, that maybe the only sustaining cost is a little bit higher depending on whose estimates you use. But the point being that it, a, a 20% increase in the gold price translates into a 50% into the margins. And I wanted to show that to, to show what, that to me is how you explain leverage. People say, oh, gold miners are a leverage play in gold. This is what it means. Um, that has historically been the case. More recently, this company ha have lagged the metal over the last several years. We haven't quite seen that leverage, um, that higher gold price environment translating out performance by the equities. Um, they're trading at historically low valuations today at a time when we think this sector is enjoying not just high gold prices, but um, and expanded margins as a result of cost control but it's also in good financial health. Um, the next slide shows um, sort of what we're talking about leverage and sort of what I'm talking about, you know, um, this company's lagging. You see their Q1, a very disappointing quarter for the equities. Yes, the gold price was uh, significantly higher and yet the stocks didn't really move much, completely not what we would expect. Um, and then uh, fortunately, uh, Q2 and Q3, are, are, it's more a reflection uh, of what you would expect it before, especially Q2. I would say Q3, while gold stocks outperform, we would expect probably expected a stronger performance. So um, there is a lot of apathy, I think, uh, like we mentioned before, towards gold bullion here out of the West. Um, you know, I, I've made this point before, central banks don't buy gold stocks. So they haven't quite benefited um, from that demand. And um, we see that reflected in, um, in the performance. Um, historically, in a rising gold price environment, we expect gold stocks to outperform. Let's just say the opposite is true. And gold stocks historically underperform um, the metal in an environment of weakening or declining gold prices. Um, we think it's important to highlight that gold miners offer an attractive vehicle to add gold exposure and should be considered in, a, in addition to a bullion allocation, like I said at the beginning. Um, I know we one of our first questions before we move to q and I'll start with the first one we got early in the, in the session, um, and it was a question regarding room from here for the miners, given the you know, almost 40% year to day performance. And yes, based on the underperformance relative, not just the metal, but historically for the sector, where we see valuations here at historically low levels, we do see a lot of potential for here for more upside for the miners in a rising gold price environment. Um, if you look at, I think the, uh, the, the, if you look at the figures, the, you know, whatever index of gold equities you wanna choose, they're nowhere near their all time highs at a time where gold, like I said, is making new highs almost every day. Um, so with that, I will stop my remarks and I'll pass it on to Andrew to get us um, a few questions uh, before we finish up the webinar. Thanks, Ema. Uh, and just a reminder to folks to uh, to pass along their questions uh, if they have uh, if they have any. Uh, we've got a couple here. Um, everybody's you know curious about gold price forecasts. Um, what are your expectations? What seems to be consensus, uh, you know, estimates for a gold's price range for the next three to six months? Yeah, I think, you know, it, that's a great question, actually. I mean, we've I've been, uh, I have made it very public that I'm not a big fan of making gold price forecasts. I was, you know, they twisted my arm early in the year and I think I did say, based on the same sort of math I highlighted here that 27, 2800 was a good level. Uh, we are there now without the investment demand coming in and I offer that soft target north of 3,000, 3,100 um, in the next few months, the next year here as a target for us. Um, in general, uh, analysts, um, for, if you look at a consensus analyst forecast, um, they tend to, to be very, reactive. Um, most analysts uh, are very hesitant and banks and commodity uh, forecasters, price forecasters are very hesitant to put gold prices uh, ahead of spot prices. And so what usually happens, they, they just chase the, the gold price. So recently in the last few weeks, 
we're starting to see all these forecasts increase. So I think we're seeing some 3,000 in the next 12 months uh, gold price forecast. We saw, we're, as, as a result, we're also seeing all the valuations of these companies, the target prices increase on the back of assumptions of higher gold prices in the future. But generally what happens is if you look across the, the different book, it's, it's probably going to be somewhere around a spot to 3,000, 3,100 or so for the until, you know, 24, at 25, maybe 26. And then after that, everybody brings their forecast down, which has material impact in for the miners, because these are companies that operate for, you know, have mines that are in production for 20 years. And if you don't value them, uh, if you value a much lower gold price, obviously it's going to have ramifications for their, uh, their valuations. But no, uh, for sure, we've seen those estimates um, come up um, here after, you know, the last few months and gold, you know, trading north of 2700 seems like sometimes these gold prices fluctuate too around uh, election periods. Do you, do you see any, you know, impact from the U.S. elections uh, or potential price outcomes based on the way that the elections might go? Yeah, I mean, I won't prob I won't make any sort of prediction what gold is going to do based on who wins or anything like that. But what I think is important to say is that the the just the fact that we're having an election in the U.S. and actually I think 60 elections around the globe in 2024. I think for sure has been supportive of gold prices. Um, obviously, the U.S. election, more importantly, and all the, um, the the volatility and the ramifications about that will continue to support gold. I think either out, outcome is probably going to be gold supportive. You know what these administrations are going to do fiscally. You know. Deficit is probably going to increase, which is supportive of gold. Look at that gold piece that I mentioned earlier. It's um, and so it, it, uh, it to me um, it only adds to reasons to want to um, you know add gold exposure to a portfolio ahead of what could happen in in either outcome. Um, kind of one of the things that you talked about was central bank demand driving higher gold prices. Um, I think specifically here, I'm looking at a question from one of our uh, one of our clients here that's asking about rationale for the 20% gold reserve um, and whether or not there were other central banks announcing such targets and you know how that has been baked into the, the current price of gold as well, maybe at this point. Yeah, so, you know, obviously, unless these banks officials make it public, we have no way to know what their ultimate target is. But I think it is important to put it in, uh, in, in the recent uh, events uh, context. Um, this all this buying, this you know, record buying did begin in 2022. It's a matter of fact, it really picked up in the second half of 2022. I don't think it is a coincidence that it happened right after the uh, invasion of Ukraine and that other banks are looking at the Russian experience and, and, and trying to, to prepare um, from that experience. So 20% was the level that Russia held. 20% is the number that Poland came out and said they want it. Is it the level that China wants to achieve? China probably wants more than 20%, um, not you know, get there very easily, but um, whether it's 20 or 15 or whatever the level might be for these uh, uh, countries that are committed to increasing their gold reserves, what's clear is that it will continue to uh, create a lot of demand uh, for gold from here. We don't see that trend changing every day. I saw we had our investment meeting today and I highlighted it. it there was uh, there's um, an article if you want to look it up in The Economist today about de-dollarization. De um, there is, um, you know, the, the surveys of the central banks. So it's not just us speculating. The central banks, when surveyed, these officials do um, highlight the importance of gold in their in the reserves and also the uh, intention to continue to add to those. So um, we'll see. Um, but like we said, for us, that will continue to be a supportive trend for gold. One quick 
pivot back to the U.S. election um, just because we got a, a question on it, and I don't want to venture too far off from that uh, and to come back to it. But uh, just, a about <laughs> <laughs> just a question about just a question about bond yields rising um, at the long end and how we would think that might um, you know impact gold prices uh, either you know medium term outlook, longer term outlook. Yeah, I mean, um, in that case. Yeah, I mean, the relationship between uh, rates and gold. It's been established historically. Lower rates, uh, real rates, so inflation does enter that equation, um, is positive for gold. And they go, an old argument, you know, the opportunity cost of holding gold uh, goes down, so um, it makes gold more attractive. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of pushback and like, oh, well, did that relationship break down over the last couple of years because the Fed started to hike rates all you know rates were up and so did gold and I think um, yeah sometimes this relationship break down over you know short periods of time but I don't think the relationship break down I think there were other factors driving gold as I mentioned that sort of um, became bigger drivers than that relationship but I think that will continue to um to hold so and we've seen it right as the fed prepares to uh cut rates gold response um in that anticipation i think that's a lot of what happened also it's not just that rates were high increasing was that the market started to anticipate uh, a pause and an eventual cut of rates and, and gold responded to that and i think that's important to remember markets gold markets but in general markets are not just pricing in, you know, the, the shorter term, they're pricing in expectations, inflation expectations, rate expectations. And for gold, that real uh, rate expectation is the key. I want to chat a little bit about um, physical demand. So you read these headlines about people storming Costco to buy gold bars. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think people are just curious, like how much is this physical demand really supporting gold prices currently? Um, yeah, it's a great question, actually, especially in the context of what we said before, where the our usual proxy of for investment demand is a bullion ETF, so not physical gold. I mean, yes, backed by physical gold. Um, but, you know, you, you're, you're buying a, an ETF and we, we haven't seen that really fully emerge in this cycle. So strong uh, physical buying has definitely been behind this um, this current uh, rally, as I mentioned, primarily out of the East, uh, Chinese, Asian investors. The Costco North American sort of story, I think is a positive one in that it highlights appetite for physical gold. And, you know, it is something we think a lot about is, are the, the, you know, the sentiment and appetite changing where, you know, investors just really want to hold it and touch it and, I don't know, put it in their vaults uh, versus just using an instrument. My, my uh, guess would be it'll, it'll still be a lot more liquid and better and more efficient to go to go bullion ETF. So that's where things will go. Uh, but the Costco story, you know, I ran some numbers Apparently, we don't know all the, the figures, but it's, it's a very, obviously, tiny piece of the physical demand story. But I think it does highlight um, that, you know, investors do want gold. And, and should this sort of current environment, and then obviously what happens with the economy, you know, the Chinese went to gold when their economy started to hurt and other sectors and other investments weren't available. And so when perhaps we get into an environment where, you know, the S&P is not making new all time highs every day too, uh, that could be very supportive for gold, whether you buy it through Costco or somewhere else. By the way, I, I will say, I, I thought it was really cool. We had one of our, um, one of the companies that uh, we were very familiar with, um, some of those Costco coins were fully sourced uh, from a mine that we have visited. So I thought that was really cool. I almost bought one. <laughs> In terms of um, physical uh, demand by country, for I, we have a question here just about Asian retail demand. I mean, are you able to sort of get more granular in terms of 
understanding how the physical markets work in Asia are, you know, more Chinese households buying than, than Indian households, you know, do we have some kind of some detail Yeah, on that I mean, level of we buying? do, we do. I mean, I don't necessarily know all the breakdown off the top of my head, but we have all the available there. The World Gold Council does a really good job to breaking down demand by category and by country when it comes to physical. China is the number one um, consumer of gold. Um, they're also the number one producer. India used to be the number one consumer. It's now, I guess, number two. So those two uh, countries, um, you know, are the a big chunk of gold um, and demand, and they they will continue to be. I think I mentioned in the last webinar as well that um, India, which again is a very important consumer of gold, uh, recently reduced tariffs for gold imports and uh, ahead of their holiday and season. Um, so that should so continue to support buying from there. This are the sort of trends we look at when we're trying to determine what's happening in, in those markets. Um, and so, yes, it's been, when, you, when we look at the, the demand data, you know, we, we show that chart that says investors in the West are not buying gold bullion um, ETFs, but actually the Indian ETFs have grown in 2024 and continue to grow and so have the Chinese uh, ETF products. So demand is coming from everywhere. And I, we hear anecdotally, you know, regular retail investors going to, you know, stores to buy jewelry, to buy gold beans, be beets or whatever gold they can get. So um, robust demand there. To be clear, it has uh, come off those sort of record levels in more recent months, but um, still at, at healthy levels. I guess maybe we should just uh, get in a, a question on the gold miners. So um, we've already kind of seen a, a move uh, in, in the miners this year. Do we still think that there's room for, for increase and, you know, re-rating at this point? Yeah, I think it's, it's both. So uh, the, the, the obvious, I guess, based on like, especially the charts I showed, is that if the gold price is going to go higher, then so should the miners. And that is absolutely true. And, you know, it's tough to Im imagine an environment where, you know, gold is going down and the miners are rallying, you know, that, that would be very exceptional. Um, but um, this, the story, my story for the, the miners doesn't end with a higher gold price. Um, like I said, I've followed this sector for a very long time, and I can honestly say this is the healthiest this sector has been in a long time. And yes, it comes on the back of higher costs because there has been a lot of inflation, but margins are finally expanding. And more importantly, the cash that is being generated from that margin expansion, that a uh, free cash flow that seems to increase every day as the gold price increases, it's being responsibly invested and deployed and the balance sheets are in good shape that isn't at crazy levels. Um, everything seems set up for, like you mentioned, not just a continued uh, performance of the miners because of a higher gold price, but a potential re-rating where investors go, okay, yes, the gold price is higher, but also these stocks look really cheap and they do deserve a higher valuation multiple. I can show you any valuation chart on any metric, price to cash flow, price to NAP, price to earnings. Those multiples are as low as they've ever been. And so we do think that, uh, you know, maybe they'll never go back to previous global market multiples, which were, you know, uh, high, very high compared to where we're now. But certainly, there would seem to be a lot of room for an improvement with those multiples from here. So we see uh, this environment very supportive of uh, coal mining equities. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Ima. Um, I think we'll probably just go ahead and give folks some uh, time back uh, without any other questions. And um, so thanks, Ima and uh, Adam for your guys' insights and for everybody for joining. If you guys haven't done so already, um, please feel free to visit our website, vanact.com, where you can access a host of gold-related content we talked about earlier, 
including the white paper we, we mentioned several times from our multi-asset solutions group with links available here uh, in the chat. Um, and also as well, uh, if you'd like a copy of the presentation, uh, please reach out to us at info at vanac.com. Thanks again, Ima, and uh, thank you everybody for joining.